As Cara said, my name's Harry Trimble. I'm uh, the lead service signer at British Red Cross. So uh, there is a Red Cross, Red Crescent or Red Diamond Society in nearly every country. And uh, we provide help to people facing disaster, conflict, health and social problems. And national societies are neutral and independent from government. So for example, uh, the only uh, aid organisation allowed in Syria at the moment is the Red Cross because we're sort of neutral. We, we don't uh, take sides. Uh, the national societies provide different services in different countries. So for example, the Kenyan Red Cross runs the ambulance service uh, in their country. Uh, the American Red Cross uh, delivers blood. Uh, in the UK, we provide services broadly into three areas. Uh, displacement or refugees is sometimes known, uh, health inequalities and emergencies. So uh, if you ever use a Red Cross service, it will almost certainly be through one of our 20,000 trained volunteers. And human contact with our volunteers is our service. It's how we deliver emotional and practical support to people at vulnerable times in their lives. Normally our human contact is face to face, but with the pandemic, this has changed. So we've been setting up various uh, support lines to help um, people in the situation. So um, our coronavirus support line so far has 119 volunteers who are working from home, answering calls to people having to self isolate, some who have little or no food left in their house and have not spoken to people in days. So, if our service, if volunteers are our service, the internet is our operating model. And the internet is fundamental to our services need to be organized and delivered in a crisis or not, regardless if our services are face to face, over the phone or on a small screen. So with our volunteers as the service, our team's job is to give them the tools to help them with their role. So these are two tools, two tools that our team has been working on, a volunteer rotor and a volunteer manual. The rotor uh, volunteers allows them to plan when they volunteer. So with it, they're able to book onto shifts, viewing upcoming shifts, cancel shifts, and to give their availability when something big happens. The volunteer manual gives volunteers the tools and information they need to answer calls to our coronavirus support line. Uh, in it includes how to set up your equipment at home, uh, searchable content for other organisations, content to accompany training to deal with things like abusive callers, and how to contact your supervisor if you've had a difficult call. So, uh, here are a few lessons um, that we've taken from uh, doing this. So first and foremost, and uh, this surprised me very much when I first got into emergencies was you can plan for emergencies. And I've actually been working full time on emergencies for um, over a year now. Um, in fact, I've actually met Sylvia before as well, because um, I work sort of crossed over. And once you get into emergencies, you actually realize there's a huge community and infrastructure in place for these things to be responded to. And while every emergency is different, we often need the same tools to respond to them. So this is an image of us uh, testing the manual in February with volunteers who answered support line calls in 2017 from people who've been affected by Grenfell, the Manchester bombing and the London Bridge attack. Uh, next, I want to say that there is always time for testing and research, even in emergency, and really not doing so will lead to services that are unreliable and hard to use when we need them most. Uh, this is a blog that uh, Laura, who used to be in our team, wrote about some work we did going around the country testing the uh, rotor. Um, and Laura, um, since left the Red Cross now, uh, is having a very quiet time as emergency planner at a hospital. Accessibility still matters in emergencies and even more. 
So for example, one volunteer who has a visual impairment told us I was worried I couldn't take part in the support line, but then I found out the manual was easy to use with their screen reader. And this takes on uh, nicely to this uh, next point. Go with stuff proven to work. Reliability is important at the best of times and in emergencies, it is essential. Lives are literally at stake. Go with design and technology choices that are proven to work. Both the manual and the rotor copy design and front end code from the UK because we know it works. This isn't the time to experiment to go with things we know are unreliable or untested. So, next point. If you can, start small and learn, otherwise rushing waste time. Our support line product manager, Ross, uh, who I think is actually tuned in, uh, tweeted about this recently. We didn't have a big bang launch with this phone line. We only answered uh, 23 calls in the first few days. And by starting small, we learned about what processes and technology choices we needed. And this has helped us develop a more reliable service that we can easily scale how many calls we take. Uh, second to last, uh, make information open by default. The manual has no sensitive information in it, so it's open for anyone to use. This is Helen, a volunteer on the coronavirus support line. Here she is at home taking a selfie with the operating manual, which she can instantly access from any device. In fact, making the service manual open has actually meant that other phone-based services at the Red Cross have started using it too. That was never our intention, but just making it so has had that effect. And finally, share team knowledge for how to operate and fix things. Currently, I'm the only person who can update the manual, and this is because we had to build it really quickly. But what, what happens if I get sick or my Wi-Fi breaks? This is a risk for our team. So that's why we're working to build a manual that the whole team can edit and change. And it'll be built as part as a, as a formal part of the Red Cross website. So that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. I you know, look forward to some of your questions and some chat about different stuff people have gone through. Thanks.